Continuing with this problem, for part b, we're looking at the function g of x equals the square root of x minus 4. So it's slightly different than what we had for f of x. So again, I'm going to start by graphing the function in my calculator first, and I'm going to leave the other function there. So I have the square root and then x minus 4. And I do want to say a little something here about, depending on what kind of calculator you have, Sometimes you'll have a calculator that gives you a parenthesis, a left paren. And so if I were putting in x minus 4 here, I would need to end that parenthesis uh, in order to make what I enter into the calculator complete. All right, so I have my function entered. I'm going to leave my window the same, and I'm going to press graph. And I'm going to see, oh look, it looks like it starts in exactly the same place as the first function, but the domain is really different. And look, there's no y-intercept. So this was my first function. This is my second function. So let's see what we can verify by hand. So we know from the first problem that to find the domain, I need to take what's under the radical and set it greater than or equal to zero. If I add 4 to both sides, that gives me x is greater than or equal to 4. That's my domain, and that's confirmed on the graph. To find the x-intercept, again, I'm going to let what's under the radical be equal to 0. Adding 4 to both sides, I get x equals 4. So I have the same x-intercept as I did for the first graph, 4, 0. To find the y-intercept, I'm going to evaluate the function at 0. So if I do so here, I get 0 minus 4, which is the square root of negative 4, and that is not a real number. So the computation square root of negative 4 does not produce a real number, therefore the y-intercept does not exist. And again, that was confirmed by our graph over here. So all we can really do is plot the x-intercept and knowing the domain and the general shape of radical functions. And I'm actually going to extend this outside the window so we can get a pretty decent shape for that graph. And then I'm going to label that as g of x.